first time in Colorado. This is our campsite here at Great Sand Dunes National Park. And there's no way we can fit our 28 foot Airstream in here. I don't even think I could make the turn. Zephyr, what's going on outside? Come on. What do you see? So this is our campsite here in the Goodland KOA. It's a, it's a nice spot. It's a back, we picked a back end 30 amp, uh, just water and electric, because we knew we could just use the dump station on our way out, and we're only here for a night. So it should work out pretty good. Uh, let me show you around some of the stuff of this KOA. It's a KOA journey, and I talked to the owner, and he said that most of the people who come here are pretty much travelers down I-70 and they just come in for the night and then they pass on through, which makes sense. And it's probably not a bad business uh, model to have for uh, the KOA. They do have a pool here, but you can see it's closed up for the winter. Obviously, by the way I'm dressed, it's still pretty cold. But I can imagine, you know, if you're traveling through here with your family and, and you've been in the car all day with your kids, they'd love to be able to stop and check out a pool or maybe even the playground. You gotta love it when someone puts some imagination into a playground and put something like this old tractor for kids to climb on and play on. I think that's pretty cool. The other neat thing is they actually have a metal slide. Every playground you see these days, there's all plastic stuff. This one's actually still got a metal slide. That's cool. Goodland has their own little community dog park. I like when communities do this because it, it helps get people together. You come out here with your dog and you socialize with your friends and neighbors who have dogs too. It's really kind of a cool thing. And apparently they've got the market cornered on fire uh, hydrants for dogs. Behind me is an art project for the city of Goodland. This is a reproduction of Van Gogh's Three Sunflowers in a Vase and it's done to represent this heartland farming community. It was painted in 2001 by Canadian artist Cameron Cross. It's really cool. Now when I look at this and I see a, a, a oil painting on an easel like that, I automatically think of the guy on the PBS um, channel who did all the painting. I can't think of his name, so if you can, put a comment in the comments below of who I'm thinking of. All right, that's pretty neat. Oh. Are you ready to? Thank you. Re ready. Ready? Ready, ready to, to hit the road. Hit the road, travel through Kansas? Yep. So this was a nice little KOA. Yeah. Your typical KOA. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's nice, had a dog park. Mountain Zephyr love that. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. I mean, nothing spectacular, but it's, yeah, it's nice and clean and, yeah. Nice, easy to get to off the highway. Right. And quiet. Right. Yeah, and it's not certainly not crowded this time of the year. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, yeah, very nice.
Last night our overnight location was a and Farms. It's a Harvest Coast location in Manhattan, Kansas. And we chose this location because there's something here we want to go visit. And it's a um, Midwest Dream Car Museum. And I've seen it on YouTube and someone else's YouTube channel. And I just have, you know, I said, geez, if we're going to be in the area, why not stop and check it out? So that's what we're going to do today. You know, obviously, if you've never done Harvest Hosts, they're basically just a parking lot where you spend the night in exchange for, you know, patronizing the host's um, store. So in this case, it was a farm market. Now, this is early spring, and there's really not a lot of fresh vegetables or anything in the market to buy, but they did have some other items, and they had homemade donuts and a few other things that we were able to pick up. And our rule is that you always want to spend at least what you think you would have spent for a campground night, you know, for the night. And if you see something that you like and you want to spend more, you can. We've spent close to 100 bucks at a Harvest House um, when they've had a lot of different things here that we like and we spent a little less than that, more to what we would spend for an overnight stay. We ran out of propane in one of our propane tanks. I woke up during the night um, and I know it was kind of chilly and the furnace wasn't running and I went out and looked at the thermometer in the living room of the trailer and it said 40 degrees. So I knew right then that the propane tank needed to be switched. So I came out and switched over to our second tank and now we're going to have to get this one filled today so that we always have a full backup. Well, it's one of those things that happens while you're traveling. Um, I don't know how you guys do it on your trailers when you have dual tanks. I always leave one tank off and one tank on and manually switch them. And I, I know you can set the regular up, regulator up to automatically switch when one tank goes empty to move to the other one. I've really never done that. And my concern is that I wouldn't know when the one tank went empty and I would continue to use it until the second tank went empty and then I would have no propane and that would not be good. So let me know in the comments how you guys do it. If you uh, do it the same way, manually switch them when the wind run, runs out. Of course, it always happens at night. Or do you uh, run them and let it automatically switch between the tanks? It's been pretty cold the last few nights, and we've had to run the furnace last night. And because we have no hookups, we're running solely off of batteries. And I, we consumed our battery down to a little over 30%. Um, consumption so we've got about 70% of the battery left now it's a little overcast right now but I'm hoping these clouds move out and we get some sunshine uh, later today that will help charge the batteries up because we've got another harvest host for tomorrow night that we want to make sure our batteries are at least fairly close to being fully topped off before we go there um, we seem to have hit a cold spell with overnight temperatures in the low 30s high 20s and that's caused us to run the furnace quite a bit during the night and it's taxing into our batteries. The good thing is we've got the lithium batteries and they uh, hold a lot more charge than our other batteries. If we were using our other batteries, we would have used 60% of the batteries probably last night or more than what the capacity of the batteries were and, and that wouldn't have been good, been good. So this is much better, at least, you know, we. We have the battery capacity to do that, and even if we don't get a full charge, we have enough battery capacity for another night. Today we're off to a car museum, and then we'll, again, get on the road and head home. Yep, continue our trip home. Or continue our trip We're not going to make it home today. No, no, and we might find some other places we'd like to stop at. Sure. So we're, no, we're not in a real hurry. We have a date we want to be home by, and it's not till next week. So right. we have a little bit of time. Yep, we're good. All right, let's get going. Today we stopped in Manhattan, Kansas to go to the Midwest Dream Car Museum. Uh, I've seen this museum on YouTube. If you follow Tyler Hoover's channel, Hoopty's Garage, he's been here and featured this in some of his videos. In fact, he, he has a car in this museum that he, that's on loan. But we wanted to stop by here. It's on our way home and it's just off the highway. And it's an easy little stop. We figured a couple hours you can wander through and see the cars that they have here. So come on in with us and check it out.
car museum and they've got about 60 cars in there a lot of different variety a lot of newer um, not newer cars but you know newer ish well, I guess a, a little bit of everything yeah I mean, they've they got antique cars cars from the 50s yeah the 50s 60s 70s you know even um, you know of the last decade yeah and they have Sonny and Cher's cars in there. They're Mustangs. Mustangs yeah. Yeah. Um, they have the coffin car from the Munsters. Um, a lot of different cars. A really kind of neat little museum. And, you know, not that expensive. Only about uh, eight bucks to get in. So well worth it. Nice stop. Yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoy seeing these cars. I like the big older cars probably from the 50s and 60s with all the chrome on. Yeah. 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 A lot of neat cars. Yeah, it's a little windy out here, if you can tell. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, it's not too bad on the radio, on the speak. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it was. Whatever I was gonna say. You, you know, whatever. Okay, okay yeah. let's go. <laughs> We leave the Midwest Dream Car Collection and get back on the highway to continue our trek east. We finish up the state of Kansas and head into Missouri where we will find our destination for the night. We get off the highway in New Florence, Missouri as we head to our destination for the night, another Harvest host. This time we're staying at Curling Vines Winery, but we're gonna tell you more about that in the next video. For now, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps us out, and it's a good way for you to keep informed of when we post new videos. Also, hit the bell for notification because we post videos on a weekly basis, and we'd love to have you follow along in our journey. Well, guys, until the next time, we will see you down the road. Take care, everybody.